Oh, your mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your head From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God The Lord. The Lord is good. All the time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Wonderful to see you on this platform. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord give you the desire of your hearts. May God order your steps where you have a need of the ordering. Say, I'm the Lord God, I change it not. He has heard those who have gone ahead of us. Therefore, we subscribe for his help this morning. And I believe God will abundantly help each and every one of us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you to this morning uh, morning voice of restoration morning glory service and uh, we are going to continue straight from where we stop remember this elaborate series of teaching has been on for quite some time and it's, it's it was it was generally captioned nugget for successful living and now we have dealt with the place of the people around us Success is never a subject of I, it's always a subject of we. Therefore, the people around you, in your quest for success matters a lot. Actually, they determine part of the scope to larger extent of our success. We saw it how Jesus picked the disciples, how he managed them, how he scrutinized them how he empowered them and how he sent them forth and supervised the power <coughs> excuse me with guidelines and instructions and we move from there now we are dealing right now about who we are ourselves i've come to realize that life is more also of subject of who you are than where you are who you are than where you are and who is around you. And that is why we have been looking at 
the center power of a man's life. And that is the heart, the kind of heart the man possess. The kind of heart, your heart define your person. Your heart define your placement on earth. So our heart is a description of ourselves. And we examine from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 to 27. I'd like uh, us to look at it from message translation. Message translation. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 to 27. It says, keep vigilant watch over your heart. Vigilant, not just a watch, vigilant watch over your heart. You see, that is where life starts. That is where life starts. Look, I want you to look at this. There's a, an instruction. I've been talking on this and I'm bringing some substance from there today. He said, keep vigilant. They say just keep your heart. I love this translation because of the word vigilant. That is, if you miss it from watching over your life, you will not have the life you desire. He said that is where life starts. And you know the Bible says, if the foundation be forth, what can a righteous man do? So the heart of a man is the foundation of his life. The heart of a man is the foundation of, it, of, of, of his life. Then he went on and he began to say, do, now he began to mention kind of heart, kind of heart now, kind of heart. Now before that, he said that is where life starts. Your behavior and action Set the ultimate destination of your life and not your environment. That's why you have to keep your heart. So he began to mention kind of heart. So your kind of heart define your kind of life. Because it does where life starts. Your kind of heart define your kind of life. The kind of mind that you possess will determine the kind of life you live on earth. Not where you are. I, I give a very good example. Sometimes those of us who live in urban cities, you invite a, a friend or a relative from the village just for a visit. Now, if that guest is in your guest room, after one month, you can trace his movement in the house. You can trace his movement from the house to your kitchen and to your dining table. Maybe the house is painted white. You begin to see Mark because that's how they live. That's how they live. They are no villager because of their location. They are villager by the kind of the capacity of the mind that they hold. That's why you see somebody who have lived in the city when he retire and build a house, mansion in rural area, it still reflect the kind of house in the urban center and not the village setup. So the mind makes the difference. The heart makes the difference. Praise the Lord. So we, we examine, I decided to break it down. We examine different kind of heart. And you know the first heart we, we talk about is the heart that speak out from the two sides of the mouth. The, he stand for nothing. <laughs> he stand for nothing. The heart that speak what? Out from the two sides of the mouth. This heart stand for nothing. It stand for nothing. I give an example of people you find like, uh, that, that's why many ended up as a liar. Because everywhere he gets to, he doesn't have what he's standing for. He go by the wave that is there. If they are abusing people, he join them to abuse. And he want to contribute. So he either have 
valid thing to contribute or he generates one which we call lies. He stands for nothing. There are people like that. They stand for nothing. There is nothing they are standing for in life. And until you have something you are you are standing for, nothing defines you. Nothing defines you. When you have somebody say, I'm looking for a job, I'm looking for a job, you know the next question you ask is, what did you study? What skill have you acquired? And you hear from many who are unemployed. They say, well, uh, any job we do, you see that? Any job we do. In other words, all his life, he has never at any time stand for acquisition of a certain skill. He has lived a free life. Wake up in the morning, just stand anything that comes. Somebody come and say, let me weed this grass. He will weed it. Somebody come and say, well, I want to pick this bucket to another location. He will do that. I know those jobs are easily come by. They are easily come by and they pay not very much. Because they are not skillful. Anybody can do them. So these are the type of people. They speak from the two sides of their mouth. In fact, James said, if any man asks, let him ask in faith. Nothing wavered. You see that? James chapter 1. Nothing wavered for a double-minded man. Let him know he will receive nothing from the Lord. So many people you see that cannot lay a claim of viable things in life. Viable things in life. Sure life, sure success are the people who have the heart that speak from the two sides of them. I'll post that James. Uh, let the studio post that James right now. They are the people who speak from the two sides of their mouth. They speak from the two sides of their mouth. And that speaking is not a duty of the mouth, it's a duty of the heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The mouth depends on what is in the heart to determine what it verbalizes out. A double-minded man is unstable in all his way. The next verse is unstable in all his way. Let that brother no, let that man know he will receive nothing from the law. A double-minded man. I want the studio to post the right scripture, please. A double-minded man. A double-minded man. Let that man know he will receive nothing from the law. He will receive nothing from the law. For let not that man think he shall receive anything from the law. Why he? Why will he not receive something of, of the law? Because he's double. He's double-minded. A double-minded. A double-minded man is unstable in all his way in all his way you see you need stability of heart to stand for something and reflect that thing nothing comes automatic everything in life that is meaningful that is valuable we demand certain things from you so you can be speaking from your double side of your mouth and enjoy success success have laid down principle then we talk about that. We have careless heart. When you go back to proverb, a message translation, we have careless mouth, careless heart. We have careless heart. Now, what happened to careless heart? This kind of heart accommodates great errors of life. Great errors of life. This heart accommodates them. Great errors of life such as gossip, banter, white lies, deception of life. This heart accommodates them. It accommodates them. For example, he starts talking about the third person. The person is not aware, neither what you are saying, bring anything to your table. Nobody pay you for it. Nobody pay you for it. And the person you are talking about is not even aware. Why is making steady progress? You are, you are talking about his past. 
and he's seen different faces of life. White lies, deception. So this 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 heart and the other. Now, the third heart, heart kind of heart is heart that focus or the heart that is focused. The heart or mind that is focused. That is focused heart and mind. It is a kind of heart that ignore all side shows and distractions of life. All he mind his own business. I know what the Bible says, Sell thy man that is diligent in his business. He said, this man shall stand before kings and not mere men. He is diligent on his, on his business. Seest thou a man that is diligent in his business? He said, this man shall stand before king and he shall not stand before me. Man. This kind of heart and the heart that most successful people possess. They mind their business. Now let's go to the fourth one. A heart that diligently watch and think about it move. A heart that diligently watch and think about it moves. He meditate. He asks of the pros and the coins. He look beyond his immediate gain. He look, he gaze into the future. This is a kind of heart that is always looking ahead. I know you need to be looking ahead to go ahead in life. This is another kind of heart. Number five kind of heart. A heart that is true or shown evil at all costs. A heart that is true or shown evil. It avoids evil at all costs. You know where we read? It say, look neither right nor left. Leave evil in the dust. It does not accommodate evil. It doesn't think evil. It doesn't see evil. He doesn't talk evil. He's never interested in the part of any evil. Now that was the kind of heart that, that, that Job, uh, Job possessed in, J, uh, in Job chapter 1 verse 8. That was the kind of heart that Job possessed. If we check verse 8 and verse 10, you will see there that Job had a heart that made him to become the greatest in the East. He was not the greatest by age. He was greatest by certain principle, certain kind of mind that he possessed. He said, and the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that is not like him in the earth, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect man, an upright man, one that feared God and eschew evil. One that feared God and is true evil. Verse 10. Then, uh, look at verse 10. It was verse 10, studio. Verse 10. I want verse 10. Has, then look at the reply of Satan. Has not thou made an edge about him? About his house, about all that he had on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hand and his substance increase in the land. Can you see what, can you see the, 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 the gain of having a heart that is true evil? Evil Satan attests that God's divine edge is around that man that have that kind of heart. Wow. Such heart enjoy divine edge from God against all activity of the devil and his cohort. Against all, can you imagine Satan to be free? I mean, your activity to be free of satanic intervention, then you are blessed, then you are successful. But when will Satan be free of your activity? When will Satan will be free? When will your activity be free of satanic intervention? There is a kind of heart you must possess. What is that kind of heart? A heart that is true evil, shun evil never be part of evil there are there are there are people they delight in doing evil i saw it in the bible many years ago and i made up my mind i will never be part of any man dance hall i will always give my hand to the one on the floor to come up i will behave like god almighty he said he raised up the poor from the donkey 
I saw it in Isaiah chapter 33, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 1. At the early part of my Christian walk, I saw Isaiah chapter 33 and verse number 1. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 1. At 33, verse 1, he said, Woe to thee that spoil it, and thou wast not spoiled, and that dealest tracheously, and they did not tracheously with thee. Look at the next statement. When thou shalt, look at it, when thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. And when thou shalt make an end to deal tracheously, they shall deal tracheously with thee. You see that? So, I shun evil. I hate evil. You will never find me where they are running any man down. Whether you are right, whether he is wrong, I don't want to be part of it. I always look for opportunity to give the little that I know. I want to say with all humility this morning, I have never been part of any organization, any city where they run a man ministry down. In my little way, I've always, I've host minister. Many churches have started from my house, from my own house. That is another ministry kicking off from my own house. Many. I've been a blessing to several churches. Please, and I've been a blessing. You may not be perfect, but please, eschew evil, shun evil. And somebody says, how do I know I'm doing evil? Just put yourself in the opposite side of the table. What you are doing to someone, will you like anyone to do it to you? Whatever you cannot allow someone to do to you, that means your conscience, leave alone the Bible, your conscience detect that as an evil and then flee from it. That is another kind of heart. Now, in all that we have said, now, Philemon, the book of Philemon, Philemon, chapter 1 and verse 14, concluded a statement here. He said, but without thy mind, will I do nothing? Without thy mind, Will I do nothing? So everything, success, failure that happened to us put into consideration the kind of heart that we, we possess. Life will not offer you anything without the full consent of your kind of mind. So your kind of mind choose your kind of life. We are back to it again. The successful are not lucky. They simply have a mind for success. Remember Nehemiah, he says, so we build the wall, and all the wall will come to the house full of it, and it were completed, because the people have mind for it. So build we the wall, and all the wall were joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. If you have a mind for success, you will succeed. And... <laughs> <laughs> you attract what you, what your mind has capacity for. There are mind that have capacity for sickness. I'm telling you the truth. There are mind. You, somebody say, Pastor, you mean somebody can have a mind for sickness? Yes. He wake up. He saw his eyes red. Instead of him to move on and get himself, he spent hours looking at it in a mirror. And you see, what you see determine what you become. What you, did, what you analyze, the time your analysis, say these red eyes, is this, is that. He begin to name it. Sit and begin to confirm them. As he's naming it, it become real in his heart. Because he's the one that named it. <laughs> You're the one who named it. You know several things has happened in your life and you ignore and you move on. And they never have power to, con to continue because your mind never give them the license to continue. I pray this morning, Whatever is contrary to the will of God that is ongoing in your life, from now, your mind will no longer res uh, rubber stamp it. It shall no longer be established. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. So your, you attract what your mind have capacity for. So if you don't like what you are attracting, change the capacity of your heart for something else. 
I put it here. A change in our mindset is a change in our life. A change in our mindset is a change in our entire life. If you see yourself you don't have, you will never have. If you see yourself you have, even though when it doesn't look like it, I'm telling you, you soon, you soon swim in abundance. That's why I say, calling those things that be not as though they were. Calling those things that be not as though they were. If you have mindset for failure, no matter the prophecy and ordinances engaged, you will still not succeed. That's why you see, in a great church, in a great congregation, they anoint everybody. But listen to me, what the outcome of that anointing service will be determined by the kind of mind you possess. Your mind makes the difference. Your kind of mind makes the difference. Not only God makes the difference. Your kind of mind. Because the same God moves in a congregation. You know, we always say that uh, the presence of God makes the difference. That is true. But I've also discovered not only the presence of God makes a difference, the, press, the kind of mind that are present in the presence of God make the difference. Make greater difference. The kind of mind. You, you look at Jesus, for example. He wrought many miracles in many cities. But when he went to his own town where he was born, the Bible says he could not do much miracle because of their unbelief. And you know, unbelief is at the center of the mind. It's at the center of the mind. It's at the center of the mind. So it is not only God's presence that make a difference. Much more also the presence of the kind of mind that are present in the presence of God. The kind of that's why God doesn't bless a crowd; He bless an individual. There were many people thronging Jesus, but one one woman have a mind that today is my healing day. The Bible says she said in her heart. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. That day was that woman's day because of the kind of heart he went into the meeting with. What kind of mind are you going about life? Are you going about with the mind that you are, a, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are a victim or you are a victor? The kind of mind. The kind of mind. Are you going around with the mind that people hate you? The kind of mind. Are you going around with the, 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 with the mind that people love you? I love what Job said. Job said, every eyes that sees me, bless me. When ear hear me, they bless me. Can you imagine? There are people who live a suspicious life. If you meet them on the road and mistakenly not say hi to them, they read a million meanings that are negative. Instead of them saying, maybe he didn't see me and just move on. So your kind of mind determines what you attract. If you have a mind, people love you, you will put up a smile and they will return with a smile. Job said, when, ear, when the ear hear me, then it bless me. And when the eye saw me, it gave witness of me. One day I was walking and one man told me, he said, why are you looking at me? I asked him, how did you see me? You were looking at me, so... That is why you know I'm looking at you. So why do you accuse me? Praise God. Praise God. So the kind of mind, he, let me tell you something. The kind of mind determine how healthy you live. You know, that's where it started from. He said they are alive to those who find it. The kind of mind. Many people live a, a, a mind, a cat possess a mind that make their life to be choky. Everything choke them. They are never happy. They don't like everything around them. They don't like their sofa set. They don't like their television. They, and these are the things that you see every day. So imagine what the Bible says. A merry heart dwell go like a medicine. Many are sick because of the mind. They don't have an appreciative mind. You are driving and you are complaining. What of those who are crippled? You are working, it's only your money, your salary is not enough. What of those who have been unemployed for 10 years? To the grateful, everything is great. May the Lord give you understanding. If you have mindset for failure, 
no matter the prophecy. That's why you see many very large number in the church never are sent to anywhere. Because the kind of mind they possess is not the original mind that were given to them as salvation. They have replaced it with the mind of envy in the church. Envy of sarcastic talk. A mind of sarcastic talk. Mind of making jest, banter, gossip. But no longer the mind of Christ that is full of creativity. That is why the pastor is prophesying, they are anointing, they are doing feet washing, and still they don't succeed. Because if you listen to Daniel, Daniel chapter 5 and verse 6 and 10, you will discover that there is a correlation between the outcome of our life and our thought. But there's, there's a relationship. Daniel chapter 5 and verse number 6. Daniel chapter 5. He said, Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thought troubled him. You see that? His thought troubled him. The look on the face emanate with what is going on in the mind. The king's countenance was changed, and his thought troubled him, so that the joint of his loins were loose. You see that? The state of the heart begins to affect the what? The, the joint of his loins. And his kneel smote one against another. You see that? Just the top. Just the top. Just the top. Have you not noticed that sometimes certain information comes into your mind and you feel like going to the toilet? Look at the, the next one. Verse, uh, verse 10. Daniel chapter, chapter 5 and verse number 10. It said, Now the queen, by reason of the word of the kings, you know what goes to the heart and his lord, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake. The queen spake. Give us the B part. The queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thought trouble thee. Let not thy thought. Where does thought take place? The thought take place in the heart, in the mind. Let not thy thought trouble thee, nor thy countenance be changed. You can see that. The other one, it was the countenance that started changing. Then the thought. Now here, the thought troubled thee, and then the countenance follows suit. So most of the hard look you see on the road is a question of what is going on on the heart. And you know, the way you look also determines what you attract. The way you look determines what you attract. Our heart is constant by this from this analysis. You will discover in Isaiah chapter 55. Look at Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 7. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 7. Isaiah 55 and verse number 7. It says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will ab abundantly pardon. My, my, my emphasis here is the subject of thought. Where does thought take place? Thought take place in the heart. He said, look, let the wicked. He is not wicked because he was born wicked. He became wicked because of his thoughts. Unrighteous man, his thought. You see, Everything that describes a man emanates from his heart. The wicked became wicked by his way, which is his thought. The unrighteous is unrighteous because of his thought. Until you stop a man thinking, you cannot stop his advancement. Let me, let me conclude here. Our heart is constantly hosting a thought that will define our future. I want you to write down that statement. Our heart is constantly hosting a thought that will define our future. The future emanates from what you are thinking. So, at one time or the other, your heart is manufacturing, creating, indicting what your future will be. So, the future is not defined from the economy. The future of every man is defined from his heart. Wow, I put it this morning. The reality of any man's future 
is more in his thinking pattern than in the prophetic. I repeat, the reality of any man's future is more in his thinking pattern than in prophetic. That's why you see, churches they prophesy and prophesy and prophesy. And sometimes somebody is there for 10 years, you see the same look. Because the future is not in the prophetic. No. The future in reality of any man is more in his thinking pattern. Proverbs 23 verse 7. He said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. As a man, for as a man, as for as he think in his heart, so he is. You become your thoughts. What you are thinking today is a prediction of your future. Life, I put the last word here, life is more realistic in planning than in prayer and fasting. Life is more realistic in planning than in prayer and fasting. This sounds so tough. Yes. Yes. This explains why many Christians are fair. Life is more realistic in planning than in prayer and fasting. If you listen to Jesus and his word very well, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, you will discover God was not praying the future. God was thinking the future. He said, in the beginning, God saw darkness all over the place. He said, and the Spirit of God moved upon the water. That is thinking. That is thinking. God did not pray Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. No, God started with a thought. God started with a thought. God started with a thought. Your 10 years is not going to be a function of prayer. It's going to be a function, first of all, of your thinking pattern. Of your thinking pattern. Hallelujah. The Lord will give you understanding. I don't want you to misquote me this morning. Read Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. You will discover that God believed in planning. God believed that future is planned and then pray through. But you don't pray prayer, you don't pray future through. No. Take it. Let me, let me come again so that you don't miss me. You don't miss my, the point. The point is this. When a prayer can make your, what you are thinking about to come true, So there is breakthrough when we are thinking, when we engage our mind through prayer. But you cannot reverse the, you cannot reverse the process. That's why James said, he said, you ask and you have not because you ask amidst. So life is more realistic in planning than in prayer and fasting. Prayer is a weapon that brings planning to pass. That's why he said to Peter, Peter, the enemy have desire to shift you like wheat, but I have prayed, look at it, I have prayed that thy faith faileth not. Prayer needs something to push that thy faith faileth not. The prayer of Jesus was that the faith of Peter should not fail. The prayer of Jesus was Peter's faith. Now, when you look at the subject of faith, you will discover the subject of faith is a subject that, eman that is centered around the thought of your heart. You say, with heart, man believe. You see that? The heart, man believe. And with that belief, Man, with our mouth, we confess what we believe. You see that? So Jesus said, I have prayed that your thinking pattern, your set of belief, fail not. Because that one that we get the job done, it is not the prayer in isolation. Prayer put the quality of your mind through. So if you are empty in your mind, prayer has nothing to put through. That is it. 
I believe in prayer. We are actually engaging in prayer and fasting. But I know these are not bribe. These are not to circumcise the circum the place of planning, the place of having a quality mind. May the Lord give you understanding. Your mind is very, very important. That's why I see many people are praying and God never had them. Because those prayers have no substance in their heart. He said, although they cry to me with a loud voice. So prayer depends on the quality of your heart to give you breakthrough in life. I repeat, prayer is pushing the quality of your heart to give you breakthrough in life. So your future is more realistic in planning than in prayer and fasting. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. You are there this morning, you are not born again. I will not let you go without giving you opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Wherever you are right now, and you are willing to pray, uh, let's pray right now. Let's pray this confession. Let's make your, let's pray a prayer of confession, and you will be saved right now. Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I'm a sinner, but today I come unto you, Jesus. Forgive me my sin and my trespasses. Wash me with your blood, because I believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus, you are the Son of God. You died and rose from the grave for my sin. Thank you. I subscribe this morning. To, I subscribe this morning to the work of Calvary. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. God bless you wherever you are hearing and wherever you have prayed that prayer. Here is our contact. You can reach us on this line for any assistance that you may require. And also the next uh, uh, banner that comes on your screen is talk about all the city where we have our presence. The Lord bless you and prosper you. Feel free to worship with us in any of our churches. And also, in case our location is far away from you, look for a Bible-believing church and begin to go to church. God bless you and prosper you. Be blessed of God in Jesus' precious name. Now it's time to worship the Lord. You know, the Bible says, cast your bread upon many waters. Cast your bread upon many waters. Every opportunity to worship or to fellowship with God is opportunity to enlarge yourself by doing what he says. Jesus was talking about love. And he said, there are other weightier matters. He didn't negate the place of tithing. Don't say you are tithing and you don't give offering. All these are all avenues. They are heavenly product through which you subscribe to establish your financial welfare. I'm talking particularly today to everyone who are participating in land relocation. That does not stop you giving to other various opportunities you have been given before. Listen to me. Until your seed increase, your harvest will not increase. If you take your tithe and you are now giving it as a relocation challenge that we are doing uh, the evening sacrifice and stop tithing, you have not increased your giving. You have actually broke the law. So don't say because you are doing uh, evening, uh, what do you call it, uh, the, uh, evening sacrifice, and then you stop giving in money glory. You stop giving in this. No, you are only impressing people. He said you love the praise of men than the praise of God. What God sees is the secret work that you have. God knows how you are exchanging those offerings and how you are ignoring one the other. So until your seed increase if until your investment increase your dividend cannot increase so don't take the dividends in the offering you have been given on sunday and say okay you give it for relocation and expect god to see wherever you are absent the blessing of god is also absent it is well with your soul but the lord bless you father accept their offering this hour use it for the advancement of your kingdom and in return bless your people thank you faithful father in jesus precious name amen what a great weekend coming ahead. I want you to believe God. As we start intercession today, uh, today we are interceding in our fourth, uh, prophetic fast of fourth month. The intercession begins from today. Today, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, and the climax come on Sunday. In, our, in Mombasa, it is our healing. It's our covenant day of healing and deliverance. The Lord bless you and prosper you. Be blessed. In Jesus' precious name.